give me liberty or give me death. Man, everybody likes to have liberty, don't they? And where I find the Spirit of the Lord, there's liberty. I'm going to preach a backwards message again. I do this quite often. I'll give you my text at the end of the message. I'll give you my text scripture at the end of the message. I uh, don't plan on being long, but I feel that it's needful. We've all got a work to do. That's right. One of my favorite scriptures in the Word of God is, I've preached on it several times. I remember the first time I preached on it. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 said, You're the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savor, it is therefore good for nothing than to be cast out, trodden under the foot of men. Amen. Uh, there was a, a class one time, a Bible class, and they was talking about the salt of the earth, and they was dealing with that scripture. And the, the, the teacher, the professor there was talking to them, and uh, he, he said, uh, uh, what, what do you think about salt? And one person said, well, it enhances the flavor. And, uh, boy, that's good. We ought to enhance the flavor, shouldn't we? We ought to make God better to people, shouldn't we, by the light that we shine. Another said it preserves it. It gives life. You know, it preserves. And, boy, that's a good thing to live by as a Christian. We ought to give folks life, even though we can't give it to them ourselves, but we can give them Jesus. But there was one young lady stood, and she said, I think the best is said." Salt creates thirst. <laughs> Amen, preacher. Thank God forever. I believe the life that we live, if we're the salt of the earth, we'll make folks thirsty for Jesus. I'm glad for Jesus, aren't you? Hey. The Bible teaches us right. and throughout the Word of God, we find most of the time when folks come to Jesus, somebody brought them. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. There was a lot of folks come to Jesus on their own, Jack, but most of the time, folks brought them. The Bible teaches us that we are the light of the world. Yes, sir, Reed. Come on. And we not, need not to hide our light, but we need to shine our light and show, show me in the good path. And I want to point people to Jesus, don't you? Yeah. I want folks to know where I stand. If you open up your Bible, you can find over in Matthew. You don't go there yet. That's not my text. You'll find in Matthew chapter 17, Jesus was with a multitude of people. He had, begin to, he, had been, uh, he had been with Peter and James and John. And he had spoke to them. And he had taken them up on the mountain, Bradley. He had transfigured himself before them. No, oh, my goodness gracious, he, he was bright to them. They were so amazed, and they was revealed unto them certain prophets. Peter said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. said, we, we ought to build a temple here. We ought to build a church. And Jesus said, no, it's not the time and it's not the place. But anyway, when they came down, they approached a multitude, and the Bible said after that they had seen this multitude, that there was a man that had come up to Jesus, and he fell down on his knees, and he cried out to Jesus. He said, Jesus, I would appreciate it. I would like for you to have mercy on my son. Said he's a lunatic. Said oft times he, he falls in the fire, and said he'll fall into the water. Anybody being a parent would know with the child in that condition, that shape, he was, I'm sure that dad was sincere. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, bring him to me. And the Bible said that he brought him to, and the dad said, well, I've already brought him to your disciples and they couldn't do anything with him. Jesus said, bring him to me. And Jesus touched that child, and that child was made whole. Many that day they looked, and his disciples looked, and that man looked and said, why couldn't we do that? He, Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Yeah, because of your unbelief, you didn't see anything happen. If you turn on over into the Bible, the Bible teaches us in Acts chapter 3, Verse 2, the Bible starts about how that Peter and John had come to the temple 
at the hour of prayer. The Bible said when they came, when they was entering to the temple, the Bible said that there was a man laid there. The Bible also said in verse 2, he was carried. What does that mean? Somebody else brought him. Yes, sir, read. The Bible said at the gate, Roseanne, he was laid. Somebody laid him at the gate. And the Bible said as he laid there, said he asked alms of those entering into the temple. And the Bible said that Peter and John walked by. I was talking about this a short while ago, a few weeks ago. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. Church, if we see revival, if we see people saved, it will be because we bring our people to Jesus. Praise the Lord and we show them Jesus. The Bible teaches us, listen to me, that there's folks out there, we see it every day that needs a touch from the Lord. And the only way that we'll see folks strengthened and see folks change is we bring them to Jesus. The Bible teaches us in another place, Mark chapter 2, very familiar scripture. The Bible said that there was, Jesus was in a house preaching and it was noise to rob, the scripture said, that he was in the house. And all word got out that he was in the house. We've advertised revival. We've uh, sent it, put out flyers. we put it in a paper. we put it on Facebook and YouTube. But I'm telling you what, if we build a fire, folks will come out. They sure will. And I praise God. I'm excited, aren't you? Church, I'm proud of you of how you've worked and how you've prayed. But the Bible said it was noise to Brown that he was in the house. And the Bible said that there was a man born of palsy. And the Bible said that there was four friends. He was born of four. What did they do? They loaded him up and they brought him to Jesus. They got down there and we preached it. We've heard it preached and taught for years. Wonderful messages on how this man was made free and set free. But the Bible said that these men brought him to Jesus. You tell me, listen, if there's always an obstacle, there'll always be an obstacle. This week there'll be obstacles come before you. But I'm telling you what, get your people to Jesus because we're running out of time. Bible said when they came, they found that there was no room to get in the house where Jesus was. Man, they tried to get in the door. Probably as they went there, we preached so many times, they might have said, we've got somebody that are here that's got a need. Folks might have said, we've got a need too. But <laughs> just take a number and get in line. But these men were persistent and they were serious. Friend, how serious are we about getting our people to Jesus? We need to be serious. Yes, sir. A lot of times we'll walk up and say, boy, I'd like for you to come to church with me. I don't believe we need to be mean. We don't. But we need to show people how concerned we are that they find Jesus. We don't need to tell them how lost they are. Listen, or how, where they're headed, they already know. But we need to show forth the good works of God and tell people how good God is and how much He can change their life. These men got this man there, found out that there was no room for him in the house. They was determined, Zach, that their friend seen Jesus and Jesus seen him. They climbed up on the roof and began to remove the roof. I'm telling you what, man, you, well, it would upset me as pastor. We work hard. Folks give our hard-earned money to the church that we have a place and it's our duty as church leaders to take care of the building. And we need to respect the house of God. It's not a play place. It's not a show place. Listen to me. It's a place of worship. And we've set it aside. And the only way that God will come and dwell in us 
if only if we respect the house of God. These men went up and they began to remove the roof. The Bible said that man alive, Jesus looked up and he saw what was going on. And the Bible said that these men not only brought him, but they removed the roof. This man wasn't able to remove the roof. Not only did they bring him and remove the roof, but they led him down to Jesus. Yeah. When Jesus saw him, he said, Son, take up your bed and walk. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Yeah. Hey. Sycamore sung that song that we all love. I told Tammy on the phone after work, after church, she's at work. And I said, I ain't never seen a song in my life. Every time they sing that song, everybody rejoices like it's the first time they heard it. Yeah. Why? Because it's God sent and it's what the world needs. Thank God there's a well that we can drink up. Yes, sir. That flows with life. Praise the Lord. And flows with abundant life. The Bible teaches us that, that very familiar scripture. How that this woman, they sang about it, talked about it this morning, had wasted her life thought that her life was over. I'm telling you what we're living amongst people today that they think that there's no hope for. Right. They think that there's no cure for this drug epidemic. Brother Andy's told me different things how that he deals with people. And I've talked to different ones. They say some of these drugs, one dose, one experience with it, you're hooked for life. But I know a man, listen, if folks will come to Jesus, that can break every bond, every chain, every addiction. I know he's able, but we've got to get him to Jesus. There was a woman that was coming, and she came to Jesus and came as we've all preached and we've all read how that she came at an hour of the day when nobody else come. Why? Because of her shame and her pity. Because she was rejected. Come on! Listen to me, these folks. I've had folks to tell me in my years of ministry. And we've heard folks say, we don't need them in the church. Yes, we do. And they need to be in the church. Praise the Lord forever. Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost. The Word of God said He came not into the world to condemn the world. But through him the world must be saved and can be saved. So many times we condemn the world. But if we'll bring them to Jesus. Thank God and they meet Jesus. The Bible teaches us that godly sorrow worketh repentance. If they'll come sorry for their past and sorry for their ways, their life can be turned around. Over the years we've seen multiple people saved here in revivals and in services. We're thankful. Thank God for last Sunday morning we seen four souls gloriously saved. You know what? They're back again tonight. That's man. That's one of the main ingredients. Folks said they don't have to go to church. You don't have to go to church. Guess what? I'm a living soul. I'm a living being. I don't even have to breathe. But it's profitable to me to breathe. Praise the Lord forever. And it's profitable to go to church. It's what makes me function. That's good preaching. This woman came to Jesus. She was amazed because Jesus, being a Jew, was talking to somebody like her being a Samaritan. Come on, preacher. She was amazed. Weren't you amazed? Listen. Yes. Weren't you amazed when the Lord began to speak oh, to you? Yeah. Hey. Come on. How many of you tonight was amazed when the yeah. Lord began to speak to you? Hey. How many was amazed when you felt his presence? Oh. When the old enemy had made you feel so dirty and so unfit? Oh, yeah. and so rejected? Yes. But oh, it's still small voices Brother Ronnie was talking about. I like the earthquake. Yeah, I like the shaft. Thank God I like the fire. Yes, sir. Some folks, that's all they got when they got saved. And they don't last very long. They just got the hype. Yeah. Praise God forever. 
I got old time salvation. I don't shout because I'm saved. Thank God forever. No, I'm not saved because I'm because I shout. I shout because I'm saved. I don't. I'm not saved because I hoop and holler. I hoop and holler because I'm saved. Praise the Lord. My salvation goes deep. Yeah. Went down deep inside. Praise the Lord forever. I can get you excited. I can get you riled up. Guess what? It won't last you till you get home. But if you meet Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. If you find him in an old-fashioned altar and the power of the Holy Ghost comes in and begins to cleanse your soul, you'll be forever changed. Got sidetracked. No, I didn't. I just throwed in some extra. Yeah, I like beans and taters, but I like all that other stuff when they put it on the table, don't you? This woman had come to Jesus. She was amazed that Jesus was even talking to her. And he didn't say, you old, he knew who she was. He didn't say, you old sinful thing. He didn't say, you no good for nothing. Why in the world have you lived like that? She already knew all that stuff. Right. She had already asked herself and everybody else had reminded her. Yeah. Jesus just asked of her. Listen to me. Yeah. He just asked of her. He said, well, did you give me a drink? And she said, what are you talking about? He said, honey, long story short, <laughs> if you only knew... If you only knew who you're talking to, yeah. said you would be asking me to drink. Yeah. Listen to me, making this, shortening this story, what happened? The Bible said that she went straight. She began to tell people, come see a man, thank God. She left her picture and took the world home. Come see a man who told me all things that ever I've done is not this Oh, it's good for you. Now I want you to turn over to my text. Praise the Lord. John chapter 5. I want to read there one of the sad, saddest scriptures that I find in the Bible. St. John chapter 5, beginning of verse 1. The Bible said, And after this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. In verse 4, the Bible said, For an angel went down into a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there <laughs> which had an infirmity of 30 and 8 years. What a long time. Oh yeah. What a long time. You're right. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? A very sad scripture, verse 7. And the impotent man answered and said, Sir, I have no man. Church, how many people around us feels like they have no man? Listen to me, they have nobody that cares whether they live or die. Have nobody that cares. Listen, if whether they have food to eat or water to drink or a roof over their head. But this man said, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. 
And immediately the man was made whole. Took up his bed and he walked on the same day was the Sabbath. Listen to me. Do you ever think about that? This man had laid there many, many years. He'd been sick for 38 years. But he'd laid there many a days. I'm talking about where <laughs> help was. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Right, at the door. right at the door of help. Yeah. Right at the door of a healing. And nobody helped him in. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'm not here tonight to tear you down. I'm not here to kick you. I'm not here to stomp you. But I'm here to stir us all tonight. We're getting ready. Listen, and everybody's excited, and I'm excited. And I'm planning on bringing me an extra cup. Thank God, and getting me several cups full in the revival. But these folks around us, it feels like they have no man. They have nobody. Listen to me. And the water's trouble. Listen, folks, here's a... I've heard Brother Timmy say before so many times, Brother Timmy Banks said, I wanted to go to church up there and I didn't even know that I was welcome. Shame on us as church members and church goers. Listen, when we pass people by and folks is feeling like they're not welcome. They have no man. Listen to me. If we get people to Jesus, we can pray that we're blue in the face. But the Bible teaches us to go into the highway and the hedges and compel people. Amen. 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 This is not a shouting message. It's a good message. And I'll make you happy. It ain't going to be very much longer. But we get so wrapped up. Yeah, there was plenty of people there after he got his healing. Come on. Yeah. Finish what you thought is, son. All those people passed him by, those religious people passed him by every day laying there by the pool within inches of help. Nobody uttered a word to him until he had got his healing and they was convinced he wasn't righteous enough because he was carrying a bed on the Sabbath day. Yeah. This very same man that they had passed by laying every single time they had gone to church. How about that? There he was. Yeah, just passed him on by. And they got jealous. Said, you ain't supposed to carry your bed. <laughs> This is the Sabbath. He couldn't tell. Come on, come on. Come on, where you go? He didn't know it. <laughs> Why? The way they acted. He had no idea that it was the Sabbath. Right. It was their fault he was carrying his bed. Yeah. Yes, sir. He. That's why Jesus told him to take up his bed. Listen to me, there's folks needs us. Oh, yeah. Amen. We'll say pray. And we'll pray. The church, it's time to stop by and get folks to Jesus. I'm telling you, it's time to stop and take time. Or oh, it's easy. It's easy. As I've said so many times, the Lord's going to give Zach a song. It's a, this is an easy We'll stop by and say, Zach, I'd like for you to come to church sometime. Most of the time we say, you need to come to church. <laughs> that, you know, that's the way we are. Yeah. But if we'll show them compassion. Zach, I want you to know something, son. Jesus loves you. Yes. And most of those people probably already know that. Yeah. They probably already know that. Yeah. But Christians has made it so hard. Mm. But if we'll look at them and say, I want you to know something, Zach. I love you too, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I love you too. You know what? I'd be very honored to walk in the church house with you. Yeah. I'd be very honored if you come in and sit beside me in the church house. Amen. That'll touch your heart. Oh, yeah. That'll touch your heart. Amen. That'll get them. Listen to me, folks. We have got to get them to Jesus. We've got to bring them in. But this man said, I have no man. I have no man. How sad. Yes. How sad. 
I want you to look around this week at your neighbors. I want you to look around at your family. I want you to look around at your co-workers. And examine them and say, are they some of them that feel like they ain't got nobody? You're going to make a difference in their life? Listen, we'd love to see them at church here. But friend, if they go somewhere else, if they go somewhere else, we don't, we don't got, I pastor the best church in the world. Sorry, don't go tell Brother Mark that. But I pastor the best church in the world. I got the best congregation in the world. That's how I feel. I feel the same way about my kids. Somebody told somebody else one time, it got to me, it always does. Said Richard Harold thinks his kids is perfect. <laughs> no, I don't. I raised them. I live in the same house with you. They're just as honorary as yours is. But you know what? I got the best kids in the world. Because they're mine. And I love them. But listen to me, church. If we get if you see my brother, is that what you had on your mind? If we see our people saved, Sister Belinda, it'll be because we get them to Jesus. Church membership is good. It's real important to be faithful to the church. But listen, our church can't change lives, but Jesus can. If we put forth Jesus and we bring them to Jesus, they'll make good church members. They'll make good citizens in the community. Their lives will forever be changed. I know this is not shouting ground. But I'm just telling us tonight. We've got to get our people to Jesus. Aren't you glad for the Lord? Tonight? Father, we come before you tonight. And we're so thankful for all that you've done. So thankful, Lord, for how that you've blessed us. So thankful, Lord, for how that you've blessed our church and blessed our people. So thankful for tonight's service. Brother Timmy and Bradley, Lord, they blessed their hearts. Lord, we're so thankful for how that you're using them. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord, not to get comfortable. Folks is dying and going to hell. Folks is leaving. All ages, Lord. Many of them's unprepared to stand before you. Lord, help us to do our job. Help us, Lord, to bring folks to you where they can find help, where they can find strength in a time of need. So, Father, move tonight. I don't know the hearts of folks. By chance, there's someone under the sound of my voice that don't know you in the pardon and forgiveness of sin. Help them to see right now they're in a good place. But this church can't change them. This group of people can't change them. This church, I hope when they came in the building tonight, they felt love and compassion. They felt like they were welcome. Because that's our duty. But help them to say, Lord, they must come to you in order to be saved, in, a, in order to be set free. Father, it's in your name we pray. Touch hearts and deal with hearts as only you can. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. If you see my brother on the road Reaping from the seeds he sown Won't you take a little off his load If you see my brother on the road If you see my brother on the road If you see my sister on the street <laughs> The world is not to off her feet Lend a hand of love when you meet If you see my sister on the street My sister on the street. The Lord said of the least of these, as you've done to them, you've done to me. 
If you love me, then you'll feed my sheep. If you love me, then you'll feed my sheep. <laughs> Jesus left so long ago. And when he'll return, I do not know. Yeah.